live in a historic house. I retired from public school teaching in 1985, but I still continue to teach and play piano after more than 60 years. Schnur Zalman once said, quote, words are the pen of the heart, but music is the pen of the soul, end of quote. I was born in Pennsylvania 82 years ago. I developed a severe case of pneumonia during my early years in Pennsylvania. The doctor told my mother to enroll me in tap, toe, and acrobatics. I wasn't as good at tap and toe as I was at the acrobatics, so I became a contortionist. By doing these exercises, I was able to get over the pneumonia. When I was nine years old, I came across an ad for a talent contest in the Lancaster newspaper. After much begging, my mother and father decided to take me to the talent contest, which was to see what instrument suited me the most. At the written test, I was looking at my mother and waving. She said, what were you doing? I said, I was just waiting for the next question. Soon after, a man came knocking at the door and said, your daughter has won a piano and free lessons for three months. By nine years old, I was at the top of my acrobatics performing in a YMCA show for which my mother made my costume. Then in 1941, when I was 11 years old, my family moved to Presque Isle, Maine because my father, an accountant for the U.S. Soil Conservation Service, was transferred. It was a solitary time for me. I had moved away from all my friends in Lancaster and my cousins in Sunbury, and we were on the brink of war. The warplanes took off nonstop from Presque Isle to England. I did learn to swim here in a freezing cold outdoor swimming pool. Then we moved to Orono, Maine. I was chosen to go to Augusta to the science fair. Here in Orono, I began to take lessons from Mary Hayworth and performed in piano recitals. Oh, there was a disastrous recital. Mother bought me a new dress for this recital and I had memorized this piece. I had come to find out that I was about the last on the program. I got up, started to play, and I put my hands in my lap trying to recover. I tried to play again, but same thing. Once more I tried, and then I stood up and said, I'm sorry, I cannot go on, and so I sat down. When I graduated from high school, we moved to Ithaca, and I enrolled in the Ithaca College Department of Music. It was tough because we were supposed to spend two hours on our major instrument practicing, one hour on the minor instrument, and then all the readings for the general education courses. I had only taken piano lessons when I was nine and when I was in high school. I met my first husband, Jim, in speech class at Ithaca. During that time, I had a job at South Onondaga near Syracuse teaching K through 12 music for two years. I went in the first year as Miss Fox and came the next year as Mrs. Clark. Jim and I both worked very hard. He received his master's degree from Cornell, and so that meant a lot of sacrifice. In 54, after typing my husband's master's thesis, we rewarded ourselves by going on a bicycle trip to New England, and the following year, a three-month bicycle trip with the American Youth Hostels touring Europe. By 1959, I had my first child, Christina, and then Jeffrey in 61. When I was pregnant with Chris, I was teaching the gifted class of fourth graders for the third year at South Hill School in Ithaca. In 1962, we moved to Hamilton when Jim got a job at Colgate in the education department while continuing to work on his PhD at Cornell. Jim received a grant from Colgate, and in 1968, we traveled for a year to Japan with a seven and nine-year-old to many countries, including Portugal, Spain, Switzerland, Italy, Greece, Lebanon, Iran, Thailand, Singapore, Cambodia, and Hong Kong. In 1972, I endured a painful divorce from Jim. I then got my master's in 1981 thanks to the advice of a very influential and dear teacher and friend, Vivian Slater. My second husband and I, Larry, to whom I had given piano lessons, married in 83. He was a retired doctor. Together we traveled widely, attending Suzuki workshops, which has had a tremendous influence on my teachings, and an elder hostel group to Italy, France, and the UK. Larry passed on in 1993. Over the years, I have been an active member in the community. I am involved with the church, lifelong learning classes, garden clubs, volunteer piano accompanist for Mrs. Silver's third to fifth grade chorus at Hamilton Central School, stamp club, three Bible studies, fortnightly, and Eastern Star. My musical family, teachers, and students have been wonderful. 
Our experiences together have been exhilarating and worthwhile. My goal is to receive and pass on the legacy of music.